This is episode 19, and on today's show, we are going to talk about some helpful cruise tips that I came away with from my cruise recently. If you listened to my last podcast, the episode number 18, I share with you that I was going on vacation on a cruise to the Western Caribbean, and I went to these three islands. I went through, it was Belize, Honduras, which is Roatan, outside of Honduras, which is Honduras, which is an island of Honduras, and also Cozumel. Great three, great stop, and I may share with you briefly about those stops, but also why I ate, I ate iguana. Yes, my friend, I ate iguana. I'll tell you where, why, and how it tasted in a few moments. But what happened is this. As Caribbean people, you might not have had my experience growing up when it came to vacation. I knew that vacation is what I heard people go on. Yes, we had school break, so we had vacation from school. And some people who were working for the government or and so on may have vacation days. But how many of us took an actual vacation, actually planned out and went somewhere, vacated somewhere, right? Vacated somewhere. We have more what we call nowadays staycation, which is we stayed home <laughs> and had our vacation. But I will share more of that as the show unfolds. Hey, by the way, I am King the Grant. I am your host, your coach, and your Sherpa. Well, a Sherpa is really a guide, so I'm your guide for this episode. And on this show, we talk about how those Caribbean people, or about Caribbean people who have migrated from their own homeland and experienced some measure of success away from home, overcame obstacles in their journey of integration and all the different things that go along with that, you hear mostly interviews that shares that. So if you've been listening, you've heard a number of interviews of people who have done just that very same thing. But today I'm going to be solo again as I share with you some tips that I find to be very helpful when planning a, a cruise for your next or for your future or a future vacation that you might be going on. If you've not yet, my friend, gone to Facebook and like the page at facebook.com slash success Caribbean style, can I ask you to do that today? Would you make it a priority of yours that you're going to like the page and get some engagement there And here is the next thing that also pertains to Facebook. I opened up or created a a group for you, my friend. Yes, for you. It is also on Facebook. This is going to be a more interactive live group where we can have free sources. We can share things and and experience building relationships and so on there. So if you go to facebook.com slash groups and type in success. Caribbean Style Innovators. I know it's kind of long. It was once called the Forum, but I've changed it now to the Innovators. So it's Success Caribbean Style Innovators. Okay, if you if you go there and request to join that group, I will make certain that once I have kind of vetted, looked at your profile and so on to make sure you are a, a real person and that you are someone who could possibly be a good fit for the group, I'll release, I'll open up and accept your request, but make sure you do that. Now, it's not a hard way to get in. It's very easy, but I want to make certain that we have people who are real who want to enter and offer some kind of value to the groups. So would you do that today? Go to facebook.com slash groups slash success Caribbean style innovators, and you will be able to request it to join the group. So with that said, let's kind of go into what this show will be about today. Now, if you have not yet listened to episode number 18, I'll have the links in the show notes, you will be able to see what I shared about my plans about the vacation and and, and all of the different things I shared about that. Now, I want to share with you some tips that I want to help you as you plan a vacation and a, a cruise 
namely a cruise. But I want to talk about vacation first because growing up in Jamaica, as you know by now, if you've been listening for a while, that I'm from Jamaica. And if you listen to episode 00 and 01, you'll find out more about me and why this show and a little a little bit of history about my starting this podcast. But I remember growing up, my dad was, you know, an entrepreneur. Now, by the way, the word entrepreneur is a new word because growing up, I didn't hear that word. If it existed, it was foreign to me. Yeah, I I didn't know about the word entrepreneur. As a matter of fact, when I speak to some people today who are in the islands and use the word entrepreneur, they don't see themselves as entrepreneurial. Even though they have a business, it could be a small business of some kind, even pushing a hand cart. I remember in Jamaica, these guys used to make these hand carts and push these wooden carts and sell snow cone, you know. It's icy, crushed ice with syrup all over that. That tasted mm, so good. Do you remember that? That was an awesome time of tasting food, uh, you know, especially on a hot day. Man, that snow cone was so delicious. And we love to have the different colors. I remember green and red and yellow. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going back right there. But this guy just pushed his hand carts and sell snow cone on the streets. And, and they didn't see themselves as entrepreneur. They just see it as a hustle. You know, we're trying to make some money and make a living. Isn't that what entrepreneurs do? And, and sometimes we don't even see that word. I also knew guys who used to get on motorcycles and create a little um, what do you call it? A little box like thing on the back of their motorcycle, and it would sell like ice cream sometimes, or it would sell some kind of food stuff right through the neighborhood and blow the horn. You remember that horn? <laughs> I, I get all, all hear it in my head. You know, they're coming through and they're going to sell you maybe ice cream and, and, and whatever else they had in their little cart behind on their motorcycle. That was a, again, it's entrepreneurial. So my dad, he operated a, a minivan. We call it a minibus in Jamaica. And it was a passenger bus. He would used to drive from one part of the city to the other part, mainly from the country to the city, and take passengers. Early in the morning, he would pick them up, and some are going to a market, they would, some are going to work, and he would pick them up and, and, and become their transportation. Way before Uber, okay? <laughs> and, and so that's what he used to do and did for many, many years to the point where he had two of those minibus, minibuses where he, my, my uncles operated one on a weekends or, you know, whenever he could. And I would go with him and be the conductor. Yes, I collected the money. Now, I did not consider my dad to be an entrepreneur all those years until recently. Recently, I mean, the last few years that I realized when I was journaling and building up my network and begin to see about entrepreneurship, I said, wait a minute, my dad was an entrepreneur. I did not see it as such. My dad would work sometimes six days a week operating those minibuses, going about working hard and coming home. And, you know, I, I didn't recall that. My mom was a school teacher. And she would go off to school to teach. But I remember my mom would have vacation time from school because during the summer, you have a month or two months off. I can't recall right now. But my dad, he still operated his vehicle all through those times. And I cannot recall us packing up and say we're going on vacation. I mean, planned out where, you know, in summer, I'm going to take a week off or two weeks off. My, my dad could not see himself doing that because he was seeing it then. If he did, well, how would we make money? Where would the income, and he was a bread, the major breadwinner of our family, where would the income come from? And, and so my dad always hustling, always on the road. So we never had any planned vacation. I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up with that. That was not a, a word we... we, we um, you know, I knew the word, but we didn't actually go on a vacation. So it was a luxury. To me, it's people who were wealthy and, you know, had the wherewithal to go on vacation, much as a cruise, right? So, but I realized that it's not only true of my dad and my family not taking vacation. I realized that a number of other family members that I know in our own rural area growing up did not take vacation, well, what was, what was your experience? I would love to hear your experience if you would share with that in our 
in our Facebook group. Let's have a conversation about that. What's your recollection? What did you go on vacation? Was it a planned vacation? Did you know that the during summertime that something was going to happen where your parents were or whoever your your um, caretaker was or were were planning a vacation with you in mind and to go away as a family? Did you have that? I I, I did not, and you know I I didn't know you don't miss what you don't know, right? You don't miss what you don't know. So I didn't really miss anything about that. We just had fun. Did some things around the, 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 the our, our community, played soccer, just hang out with the other kids, and just do stuff like that, you know. But I realized, as an adult, I could find myself working, 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 and not planning a vacation. Because again, like my dad, I'm thinking, if I go on a vacation right now as it is, it means that an income because I don't have enough virtual income yet where I can say, you know, you're sleeping and you're making money. I'm getting there. I'm working towards that. And I hope you are too. And that's more of a conversation for another podcast. But what happened is I have a reluctance, or not a reluctance, but I have a hesitancy. But thank God for my wife, who is who grew up with vacation and know, know, the, know the importance of that. And I also know the importance of it. It's not that I don't know. It's not that you don't know. It's not that people don't know the importance. It's just to pull themselves away and have that vacation time. So as an adult, we began to shift that. And my wife plans most, if not all, of her vacation. And I'm okay with that. And she's okay with that. It's not that I can plan or would not plan it. I would make suggestions and she had she all the ideas to share with me, and I made the final decision. But upon her, with her having more of a flexibility and more time at her work and so on, she can look around and see good deals. And trust me, I tell her she needs to start a business because she finds some great deals. I mean, she really scanned the internet, she scours the internet. And she find she knows where some good deals are because, as a matter of fact, some of my family members would come to her and ask her, would she find a good flight or a good, whatever it is, vacation packages? Because she she has really gotten good at that. And to her, hey, that's a business idea. So maybe we, we'll see what happens there. But anyway, she found us good deals for us and she would plan them out and and we, in advance and put aside money. And the last episode I shared about how to how to really go on a vacation And I talk about planning and have the mindset that you can do it. Those are two very important elements of being able to go on a vacation. You don't have to be rich to do that. You just have to plan. And I believe everyone can experience. Let me put that back. I can't. I wouldn't say everyone because I, I would not be fair. Not everyone have the wherewithal or the means because some people in some in some countries maybe where you're listening you're listening from right now you would say Kingsley it's easy for you to say because you don't know my situation you don't know our our economy whether it's our home economy our our country economy or our community economy you don't know I don't even even have a job so you know so I want I want to pull back and not say everyone but I believe that most people who have not taken a vacation can it's through planning, it's a mindset, and I believe that is very important. Again, I want to put this this um, caveat there. Again, it's, I want to be real and be honest and be, be true that not everyone can do this. This is a reality. Unfortunately, it's not everyone. But I believe you who are listening to this, this audio right now, this podcast, I believe you can, right? So I'm speaking to you about this. Now, as I mentioned before, I went on uh, this cruise and we went to these three different islands. That's where our, our stop. Now, one of the things I recommend, which I did not know until we got to, our, our first stop was um, Honduras, Roatan. And what happened was we got off the ship and then we were able to walk to most of these, uh, these ports where we the ship docks. They have some kind of market, you know, for tourists and the price of tourist prices. Price that I can't afford sometimes. I love to go inside and say, let's see what the rural people or the people in the area, what price they pay and what they, you know, what they do. 
So we, we took a, a, we hired a, um, we pulled our resources together. It was nine of us. We pulled our resources together and we, we were able to hire a, a minibus, a van to take us in these three different locations. We wanted to go inside the rural city and see what it's like. So in Roatan, we happened to go into this place where it's a restaurant that the local people would eat or, or people would eat from that restaurant, those who can afford it. And there they had, we had lobster. Now, it sounds like, ooh, that's a lot of money. No, it was not that expensive. As a matter of fact, for 20 bucks, you could have a huge lobster. And I'm talking about delicious lobster. It's D-E-L-I-S-H-U-S <laughs> lobster. Wow, they, it was well seasoned. Oh, man, it was like finger licking good lobster. The meat was all there, lobster tail, right? And, and so my, one of my family members ordered that. We tasted it. It was awesome. We also had fried fish, humongous fish. The plate could not even hold the fish. It was so big. And wow, that, talk about, again, delicious, right? That's how it tasted. And just well seasoned with the rice and peas. And it was awesome. And then what I went there for, and I asked our tour guide to take us to, because I wanted to, I wanted to taste, right? Iguana. Yes, iguana. I know it's squirmish to even think about it. Iguana, who? Yes, iguana. And, and what happened was, um, this place was special in how they prepare it. And our tour guide took us there because she knew that. But guess what? We got there. I saw all these people. And when we put our order in, the lady came back and said, I'm sad, sir, I'm so sorry. We're out of iguana. I'm thinking, out of iguana? Are you kidding? Are you for real? I drove all the way here for to be told you're out of iguana? Are you serious? And she said, yes, I'm so sorry. And but it was no, there was another couple, um, a family who was sitting beside us who also came for iguana and was told the very same thing. And we began to talk and say, oh, man, what a, what a letdown. What a disappointment. But anyway, they tour guide was able to go and ask, can I have a sample, just a small cup of what it would taste like to have the iguana. And she brought it back. And I just took a fork in there and tasted it. Oh, delicious. That thing tasted so good. I know it's kind of squirmish to think about it, but yes, it tasted so good. I wish I could only have a full meal of it. And I had my couple of my family members who were brave enough also tasted the iguana. And, and that was, was delicious, right? Again, we, so we, 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 did that, we did that there and again in, in Cozumel and in Belize, we drove around. Unfortunately, we did not taste the local food in Belize or in Cozumel, but we did in, in um, Honduras, which is, again, Roatan, which is a, a small village or a, a, a little island outside of Honduras, which is part of the bigger, bigger um, island itself. So it was really a great, a great trip. But here are some things I want to share with you as far as tips that are concerned that about a cruise, because that was an experience on the island. What about on the ship? Here's the first tip. Number one, make sure that you bring clothes in which to exercise. Yes, there is, every cruise I've been on, there's a gymnasium there, small gym, but enough, because not everybody go and exercise because they're on vacation, they want to rest and relax. And sometimes these vacations have older people who don't want to exercise. So you can always find a room there to do some exercise at different times. And there's also a deck, and this deck seven of the ship, normally, of most of the ships, is one deck that you can walk on the outside of the deck all the way around the ship. That's a deck you walk and you jog and walk if you so desire. So I would say bring some clothes to exercise. So whether it's going to walk on the deck seven all the way around. And what I find, 2.7 um, 2. laps of the ship equals one mile. So to walk two miles, you got to walk 5.4 laps of the ship. So I would I would try to do a three miles, right? So it's six point almost like what? That's seven point point what? Seven point one thereabouts, right? So, or eight point one. Eight point one laps. So two point seven times I am so, I'm sorry. It was two point four laps equals one mile. Thereabouts. It doesn't matter. The point is 
bring some clothes and exercise because you're going to be eating, eating, and eating some more. There is so much food. Every time you look around, it's time to eat again. So bring some, some clothes to exercise. Secondly, bring a good book to read. It could be on your, you know, your iPad or some other electronic device or an audiobook. You can spend some time just to take some downtime and me time. You say, well, Kings, I'm on a vacation. Why do I need some me time? Because trust me, when you get back off the vacation, you will be one tired hombre or hombre. Right? One tired person. <laughs> right? One tired person. So I didn't do as much me time on this trip, but I realized tip number two is I needed to have taken some me time where I just don't do an activity because it's been offered. You don't have to do it. But I was with family and, you know, I, I wanted to just be there to, especially the younger ones, to make sure they get as much um, opportunity as possible. And I didn't have much me time. And so I came back very exhausted, very, very exhausted because sleep is not as, you know, you would have in your home because the boat sometimes hits some pods in the water and it rocks and, you know, that kind of stuff. Nothing too bad, but it does interfere with your sleep if you're not a deep sleeper. I'm not a deep sleeper, so I did wake up at those times. And um, and then I find also in the rooms, it was not that cold. So I would kind of kick my sheet off and put it back on and kick it off because it could sound like I'm having hot flashes, right? No, no, it was not that cool. So tip number, tip number two is bring a book, good book to read and or, um, you know, whether it's electronic or otherwise. Tip number three is... Because you be off the grid, and if you're a person in social media, be okay. You're going to be, number one, not knowing what to do with yourself. Because if you don't pay for, for online, for Wi-Fi, you have no Wi-Fi connection. And, and so it's very important for you to realize that and plan accordingly. And be okay. It's good to take yourself away from social media for some time. That forces you to do that. So my tip is do not... Do not get Wi-Fi. Don't pay for Wi-Fi because to do so, you are going to then get right back into what it is you're trying to vacate from, and that is to to be off the grid. So avoid trying to purchase Wi-Fi while you are on, on the cruise. That's number three. Number four tip of this is the bath. Okay, If you're a tall person, yeah, I thank God that me being my height, it really worked on my behalf. Because sometimes I say, oh, man, I wish I was much taller. But, you know, on a cruise, I'm happy I'm not too much taller. Because the showers are not, and it's great size showers. It's a little cubby hole. You know, I have a friend who, who was a big size, big, big fella, big guy. And he, he jokingly said when he had gone on a cruise a few years ago with us, he said, man, these showers, I can't draw the screen I have to have one foot outside this shower and one foot inside because I can't hold in this little cubby hole called a shower. So if you are a tall person, remember, you're not getting a stateroom shower. So it's not like being at home. So be prepared to, you know, kind of make yourself fit in that little bathroom. You go in one way. You back out that way. You you know, you can't turn around. And see, if you're a big person, you won't be able, to be able to turn around. So. Be aware that the shower is very small and, you know, don't be surprised, don't be shocked. A tip is, a tip about this whole thing is be prepared for that and kind of adjust to it because that's a reality. Unless you want to buy, you know, a stateroom kind of a, um, a stateroom suite and then you may have a bigger shower. I don't know. I've never been in one of those. So I can't tell you what size that is. So have the right mindset. And the last tip, tip number five is this. Not because it's been offered, not because they announce it, means you have to participate in everything. You will wear yourself out. Pick ahead of time what it is you want to do for the next day. Plan your day ahead of time. So you can go down. The, an itinerary is provided every single night that tell you of all the activities that are coming up, where they're being held. So I would also get, become, fami- become familiar with the boat as far as where to, you know, location-wise. Because if you don't know, you can get confused. It's so large. But plan the day before 
what your activities are going to be on the next day. So you don't get up the next morning and wonder, what should I do? And they're making announcements of what's happening and you feel you have to be there. No, you don't have to be. Just choose where you want to go, what you want to do. And see, you know, your day will go much more smooth. Okay, so these five tips, again, five tips are number one I mentioned before was, you know, I, I may not do it in the order I gave you, but the idea is that, um, you know, plan to exercise, bring exercise clothes, right? Number two, avoid purchasing the Wi-Fi. Don't purchase a Wi-Fi, right? Number three, again, one of the third tip I mentioned was plan your day accordingly. Plan your day accordingly so you don't have to then be in everything, right? Number four, have some me time. Have some me time, whatever that is for you. It's very important that you do. Number five, be, know that the, the shower be, you know, <laughs> go there not expecting to have a shower that possibly is going to give you any kind of, um, you know, room space as you would have, you know, at home, right? And, and of course, also the bed is not as, as necessarily the same size you might have. I don't know what your bed size is. And let me give you a, a bonus tip here. When the ship docks and you have a time to go inland, let me suggest get out the ship, and just go and just walk around if you had to walk around just to feel something different, just to see something different. I would recommend you get off the ship just to experience some things um, that you came off, right, number one. But um, it, it's really good for you to do that, all right? So I hope these five tips were very helpful as you plan your vacation, especially if you plan a cruise as your vacation. And I hope you will be able to tell me, you know, when you do, what that experience was like. All right. So again, I want to say thank you so very much for taking the time to listen to this episode of Success Caribbean Style. And it's, again, helpful cruise tips, five helpful cruise tips that I wanted you to have. With that said, my friends, again, don't forget to go to the page on Facebook. And also, if you've not yet done this, would you, on the page at successcaribbeanstyle.com slash one nine, you'll find some links there about how to leave a review on the show, where to leave a review on iTunes or on an Android, right? And through um, Google, so that you can be able to um, help me get the show uh, um, more in more people's earbuds, right? Tell someone else about the show and encourage them to listen as well. I'll see you on the Facebook group in a few. With that said, my friend, God bless. Peace out and see you on the Caribbean side. Yeah.